Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial we're going to talk about how to create corners for pattern brushes. So I did create a tutorial a while back that showed you how to convert your hand-drawn doodles into a pattern brush so you can make a really easy wreath like right here. But if you have anything with sharp angles like a square or a rectangle, you need to incorporate corners to your pattern brush. And corners now with Illustrator Creative Cloud they actually automate it, which is really, really great if you're making a geometric pattern brush. But if you make a hand-drawn pattern brush, the automation obviously does not work at all because you want to customize that if it's hand-drawn. So this is what we want to be able to get to, where you can have your wreath, you can have it on a square, on a rectangle, on anything weird shaped. So you have what we call outer corners and inner corners right here. So I'm gonna show you how to establish both of those if you have hand-drawn elements that you'd like to convert into a pattern brush, exactly like what you see on screen. So I'm gonna walk you through those steps because there's some extra considerations to keep in mind as you're working with hand-drawn pattern brushes. So I have a brand new document over here. This is 11 by eight and a half. It's an RGB document, but that doesn't really matter. Just make a document any size because obviously we're working with vectors which can seamlessly be scaled up or down. So what I have here is the original doodle off of the original tutorial that led us to this wreath. And if you click in the video description, I have a link to that tutorial that walks you through how to make just a basic pattern brush, just like this. So at the end of that tutorial, you'll have an outcome just like this. So we're taking it from that point of the tutorial and now we're going to add on corners to this. So I have this element right here. And the first thing that I wanna do is draw an invisible rectangle around it and turn on my smart guides. And you'll see why in just a minute. So you just wanna make sure that if you come up here and go view smart guides that they're turned on right here. And we're just gonna come in super close and we're going to draw an invisible rectangle around it just so it's got bounds because those will come in handy in just a minute. So I'm gonna hit M on my keyboard for my rectangle tool. And you can see my smart guides are kind of showing me where everything aligns so I want the furthest extreme on this side and the furthest extreme up here so I'm going to kind of grab this corner and then just drag it out until I find my other extremes right here and I'll kind of snap into place there we go and we don't want any fill or any stroke on this so you can see if I go into outline mode command Y or control Y on a PC we can see all of our outlines. I can deselect right here, and now we've got a box around this. So I'm going to select all these elements, and I'm going to group them together, Command G or Control G on a PC. I'm gonna exit outline mode, which you can get out of just by hitting Command Y or Control Y on a PC. And now I've got it with this invisible rectangle. Now the next thing I wanna do is duplicate this. So I'm just gonna hold Alt or Option on my keyboard, click and drag, and now I have a copy. And this one I wanna rotate 90 degrees, so I can just grab a corner, begin to rotate, hold Shift, and it will rotate in 45 degree increments. And now I have a copy that's vertical instead of horizontal. And now I just want to align it right here at the most extreme, so I'm kind of creating a corner right here, a box corner. So if I go into outline mode again, you can see they're perfectly aligned. So this is what I want it to look like in outline mode because the square is going to be really important. Okay, so the next thing we need to talk about is the width of your doodle right here. And I just brought this in from the original tutorial, but we do need to edit it slightly because it needs to be in proportion with this square. So if you're going to have a rectangle here, this works best if this rectangle is basically the width of two squares. So if I draw out this square right here, if I just grab the corner right here, and I hold shift and click and drag, I can make a perfect square and I just wanna drag it until everything aligns. And now I wanna make sure that the width of this doodle is the same width as two of these squares. So I'm gonna hold alt, click and drag. As I'm dragging, I'm gonna hold shift to keep it straight. So that's one square worth. I'm gonna do the exact same thing again. And now this is two squares worth. And you can see I'm over by just a little bit. So the first thing we wanna do is just bring in this rectangle so it hits where the square is and then we can delete these squares. So I'm going to ungroup this rectangle from the rest of the doodle. So you can do that by hitting Command Shift G or Control Shift G on a PC. And I'm just going to drag that in until it hits that second square. And now I can delete these squares that I had in here. 
Okay, so now I just want to drag the points of this doodle so it hits the edge of this rectangle now. So let me just grab these points. I'm using the direct select tool, which is keyboard shortcut A. Just click on a point and I'm just going to bring it in here. Since this is hand drawn, um, you have a lot more flexibility with where your points end up, but you wanna make sure that they follow this edge of this rectangle right here. Okay, so all that work was just to make sure that this rectangle is in proportion to this square over here, which makes everything more proportional when you apply it to different paths later on as a pattern brush. So now I can select, let me exit outline mode right here for a second. Now I can select all these doodles and the rectangle and group it all together. So this is exactly what I want. Um, obviously this one is wrong now down here, so we can delete that and we can just repeat the exact same thing we did before with replicating one and then rotating it 90 degrees and then aligning it right over here. Let's see what that looks like in outline mode. All right, there we go. Okay, so now we need to establish what our corner even looks like. And we need to make sure that it attaches to this part of our doodle and this part of our doodle. So I'm just actually going to grab the pencil tool and I'm just going to sketch one in right here. So first I want to have a doodle that's like this and obviously I'm drawing with my mouse so this is super rough but it'll be fine close that off and kind of adjust I'll give you my pencil settings if you want to draw this with your pencil tool too here's my pencil settings and now I want to add on a doodle just or a leaf doodle just to make sure that it kind of follows with the design so I'm just gonna freehand in a leaf doodle right here and I think it probably has to be a little bigger than that. Okay, and then I'm just gonna go in with my pen tool and clean up the points and make sure everything aligns perfectly. So I'm just grabbing my direct select tool and using my pen tool as well to adjust these. Like I don't need that point or that point. Okay, so we have our corner all set. Let me exit outline mode. This needs to be colored black, obviously. All right, so now I'm gonna group this with the square that's around it. Command G or Control G to group. And now we can apply it to a brush. So I'm going to come over here to my brushes palette. You can get to that by going window, brushes, and it'll pop open. And all you wanna do is grab your one segment right here and just drag it over and it will automatically create a brush and define it as a pattern brush. So I'm gonna hit okay. And now you can see over here with this orange little square in the corner, this is Illustrator taking everything into consideration and creating a corner for you, which you can see it doesn't really work with hand-drawn stuff. You can see it's skewing a lot of the elements right here. But if you're working with a geometric pattern brush, this actually works amazingly well. Um, you can get some really cool different outcomes by using what it automatically generates. Um, but for a hand-drawn, obviously, we want to keep it our own custom drawing. So I'm just going to select none for now. You can see how this pattern is our main pattern of the brush. We can get a little preview over here and everything else can stay the same. We can call this leafy and it's going to be fixed 100%. Spacing is zero. I keep mine as stretch to fit. In colorization, you can dictate um, however you'd like right here. So I'm just gonna hit okay. And now this gives me my original pattern around, it works perfectly for circles or ellipses. So if I draw this, you wanna make sure it's your stroke that's selected. And I can come over to my pattern brush and just click on this and it will apply it around. If it seems super big like this one, just reduce the stroke point up here. So if I come down to like half a point right here, you can see you can rescale it really easily. Um, this is what 0.25 looks like. So you've got a lot of flexibility once you have a pattern brush created. So you can see this works really well for circles, but as soon as I have a square, let me draw this out, with hard corners and I apply it, it gives me the segments, but it doesn't finish the corners right here. Even if I reduce the stroke, I'm missing my corners. So this next part is where we introduce our corners. So in order to do that, 
All you're going to do is select the corner that you created, hold Alt or Option on your keyboard, and drag it into this first position right here. And now you can see it's dropping it in right here. This is our corner, our outer corner tile. And you can see the scale is way off in this preview, but it'll actually work out well once it's applied. Um, I'm not sure why Illustrator does that, but it does work. So we just wanna make sure that this is going in the right direction to connect everything. So I'm gonna hit okay. And now, since I've already, since I already have this pattern brush applied to strokes, um, I can just hit apply to strokes and see what we have. And you can see it pops them in and they're at the correct scale. So nothing to worry about right there. So we're looking really good so far. But if we bring in another kind of odd shaped rectangle, so if I create a rectangle like this and then I cut into it, let me grab my pathfinder. And now if I have this shape and I apply the same pattern to it, let me grab the brush, click into it. You can see they're scaled really funky and I'm missing my corners right here. Um, let me reduce this down so you can see it a little bit better. So everything is looking all right, except we're missing these corners now. We've got this corner right here applied. So we need to define an inner corner, which would be this segment right here. And you can see on this pattern brush that comes with Illustrator as a default pattern brush, this is the shape of it right here. So we can create that for ourselves. So what we wanna do is return back to our segments over here. And we wanna grab this segment. So I'm just gonna make a copy of it. Alt, click and drag. Let me go into outline mode and I'm just going to drag it up so it's in position right here. So I've got my square and now I can make a square right here or actually let me grab this square and just bring it in since we're going to adjust what we have right here already. So I'm going to hold alt, click, drag, hold shift to keep it straight. And now we're going to ungroup this because we need to move this one around. So with it selected, Command Shift G or Control Shift G on a PC. And I'm going to select this element and just rotate it around so it kind of matches up with what I need right here. And if I bring it over, let me bring it up here first. You can see that I'm a little bit off right here. I'm just going to go in and adjust these points so everything lines up the way that I need it to and then I will be right back. Okay so I've got everything lined up now and if I exit outline mode you can see what that looks like. I'm going to regroup this corner with the original square right here so command G or control G on a PC. And now, I'm not sure why Illustrator does this either, but this is how it works. Even though this one is shaped differently, because obviously we have the length of this one being extended compared to the length of this one, what you want to do is with your inner corner right here, this shape, you're going to make a copy. So Alt, click and drag over here. And what you want it to do is just be rotated around so it looks similar to how this one's curving around. So I'm just going to rotate it around like this, and now I can drag it in. If you don't rotate it, it won't line up correctly. So now I can select this, hold Alt, click and drag, and just when this square highlights right here, you're just going to pop it in. And now you can see that this part right here is the part that we were looking at, aligns correctly right here. So now I can hit OK, and you can see it's right here right now as well, and hit OK and we're going to apply it to the strokes and you can see how it pops in down here with this weird shaped object and everything looks correct. So that is how to create corners for pattern brushes in Illustrator when you're dealing with hand-drawn pattern brushes. And once again, my original tutorial on how to create wreaths, the really basic kind, just to make sure it's seamless, um, click on the link in the video description and you can check out that tutorial. If you wanna take things further, then just make sure you follow along exactly as described here to make sure everything is scaled correctly and kind of flows the way that you need it to for all different types of circumstances. So that's how to create corner elements for your pattern brushes in Adobe Illustrator. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe and don't forget to check out my website every-tuesday.com for even more design and lettering tutorials and freebies. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time.